Hello, how are you? This is Jelly Bling. I have a project today featuring color and contour stamp set and die set and a little bit of new product from the new holiday mini catalog. Um, but this I was trying to make a card look a bit fall-like. So I have this new designer paper and I'll show you that in just a minute. Um, and this has um, mossy meadow on it and I'm trying to do like fall color cards but I love the words on the stamp set. So that one, the inside, I did it just a little bit different using these images. And this is a two-step stamping stamp set. It says right down here in the bottom, two-step. Which means you could stamp one um, stamp in possibly, not always, a darker color. Or you could even heat emboss it. And then put this one right over the top and it colors it all in for you. The same with these flowers. Same with this bud, a little bit of a background, but this is um, a bit of a, um, oh, I'm missing the word, abstract, abstract, where there's not certain lines, like you could tell, yes, that's a leaf, but this over here, what is that? It's just something just a little, a little creative and artsy. Great words in it. So these are all of my, um, my little samples using different ribbons, they all have just a few pearls on them. That one's a little different on the inside, but great words. And there's this one using the elegant trim. And this one I have this old ribbon and it works so perfectly for this card. And this time I try to put the lighter, the oranger, the brighter flower on top and the deeper, richer flower on the underside. Then use that stamp. These have a bit of what color is that? Poppy Parade on the center of them. And then the top one is just um, Pumpkin Pie Alone. And there's this one. And in the paper pack, they had um, a few sheets using the, um, the Moody Mauve. So I was trying to throw that into there. So very happy for you. So this is today's project. Here's a stamp set, and here is a paper. It's all about autumn. And what's beautiful about this paper is, and I have about half of it left. I've already used, I, I might be able to pull out, I, I could show you what I used, um, again, this metallic side. So there's one side that's metallic, and one side that is, hey, that almost looks like my sweater. I'm in the mood, I'm in the fall mood. There's the one with the mauve. I think that's either, that's probably copper clay. More mauve. And I pulled out all of the sheets that have the, the green, the um, moody mauve, mossy meadow on them. But it's just, it's beautiful paper. Ooh, look at the wood grain. Books, leaves, sweater. And of course the dies. I love these dies and I use them all the time. Perfect for words, perfect to put a flower right on top of it. This one is perfect for words. Great for a big outline border. And then there's dies to cut out the flowers, whether it be the standalone flower or the leaf um, with the stem, which we'll use today. Let's see. Here's that paper. So these projects are using from the new catalog, um, Fruitful Blessings. And if you see this and if you like these, if you order it before um, the 10th of the month, I would love to send you the card kits. But this one is using the um, oh, Pretty Peacock paper with gold, that might even be more copper. But aren't those pretty? Okay, well I'm on a roll. And there's videos for each of these um, on my blog. Beautiful papers. Oh, and then look at this one. Okay, and then we'll get back to the project at hand. So it'll stand up. 
but look how pretty that is with the die cut pieces right on top of the same color paper to act as a background. Then I put what colors I colored them. Okay, back on task. I love these cards. Kind of, kind of proud of them. Okay, so color and contour. Color and contour is in the catalog on page 25. And there's a stamp set, and then the coordinating dies are on page 166. And I saw this on Pinterest, and I copied it from Cards by Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl, for sharing. Okay, so we have white cardstock thick. And what's nice is this card, um, it's very nice, but it's not, it's not too, um, it doesn't take too much work. Sometimes, like the ones I just showed you, th those take a lot of work. This one, not so bad, especially because there's a die to cut out that, um, that flower, the stem. So this is that specialty paper and it's called All About Autumn. Put that there. And then we will be using, oh, this die, the scallop, it comes in the um, color and contour dies. And then this is for the flower stem. So let's start out by stamping, let me find one of these, the words. Thanks for everything. Everyone could use more thanks, right? So I have two different size whites, and I'll put all the paper cut sizes on my blog, which is jillybling.com. Scroll way down to the bottom, and it has everything right there for you. So these are inside papers. This white paper is a little bit smaller. Then this large paper is the same exact size as the card front. And we're going to stamp the greeting on here. But before we stamp it, you're thinking, well, wait a minute, where does that scallop die go? It goes right about here but I have an extra piece that will just act as a little reference. I'm just gonna set it right here. But the trick to placing your die in the right spot is to keep in mind this designer paper is only one inch. So you wanna cut off less than one inch. And that's just giving me an idea. That's about a good place. And then I'll know where to stamp the words. Thanks for everything. Thank you for everything. Okay, that's good. Okay, now I'll put the die on here. I'm gonna hang on to this. And I have a lot of washi tape on here because every time I went to run it through, because probably because my plates are warped, but the first part, for instance, this up here is fine, but then as the pressure shifted down to here, it would scooch over. So you could give it a try, but just be aware you might need to have way too much washi tape. Okay, so this just gets stuck on with glue. Isn't that pretty? I love the little stitching on the side. So I don't know that I have any stories other than I ordered lots of paper because I want to go on the Stampin' Up! incentive trip. And I have to put in lots of orders to get enough points. So Tony today, I said, you need to go down there because I ordered a lot of paper, a lot of boxes. I mean, standing up taller than me boxes of paper. Um, he's like, that's not hand cart worthy. That is get the tractor with the little wagon behind it. <laughs> he did. So all day today, I have been... Unpacking boxes, putting paper 
in the laundry room against the um, the folding table, the whole back of the room is full of paper. But he walked in there and he goes, oh my gosh. I'm like, well, we, we're, we're going to go on that trip. We are just going to go. He's like, yeah, yeah. And I'll, I'll use it. I did this last year and I went through it. Okay, so the colors I have here, I'll go through them. I have, and we'll color this one because this is more the oranges, more of these colors here. So I have Berry Burst Dark, Sweet Sorbet, Light and Dark, Mossy Meadow for the green leaves, and this one is Poppy Parade Dark, Pumpkin Pie Light and Dark. This is SU 400, and that's more for the inside of that one with the sunflower looking. This one here. That's where the SU 400 is for. Did a little bit of masking. What should we do on the inside of today's project? I didn't plant. Where's that other one that has? Okay, that's to be expected. That certainly goes. But what about this one? How about something like that? Okay, that, that could be the inside. Okay, so to do the coloring, we'll color the inside just like this, which is these colors. Okay, so to do the coloring, I'm going to start with the darkest and hold this up close. Just go where wherever the petal comes out from the flower center, the bud. And right now I'm just trying to identify each of the leaves. This will all make sense in a minute. These are definitely leaves. I know it's a little sloppy right now, but you know, sometimes you have to do the things you have to do. Okay, so now let's clean up the sloppy. I know I definitely want dark along the bottom. And dark along that bottom part. Okay. Next one, dark along the bottom. I had to go back and look at the picture in the catalog trying to figure out, okay, now what, what is that part? Particularly this leaf right here. And when I did the samples, I kind of colored it. I was just winging it. It's like, it's a leaf. It just gets colored green. But then when I used the dye to cut it out, it's like, oh, you're doing something a little different there. It's being abstract. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a minute. Okay, so that's the dark color. Next is sorbet and if ever you're wondering like what color should I do this is how I started out where I took poppy parade poppy parade dark poppy parade light then berry burst dark berry burst light I was like could those go together well if the um, berry burst dark was like the depth of the petal and then these are the lighter that's what we're doing now well you know what I think this is poppy parade and we're using sweep sorbet which is a little bit easier then I was trying to make more of an orange color so I was using coral light and dark then this one is just pumpkin pie or that was coral dark and pumpkin pie and then this one was trying to do the moody mauve with berry burst and I thought ah that just looks dirty so sometimes you just have to play around with it because you have no idea of knowing what is it really going to look like. Do those colors really, can they really blend together to make it look decent? Oh, and you know how I was talking about not knowing what color to color things? Do you notice how that leaf right there? It's like, well, you colored it, but then you cut it off. I colored it, but then the dye said, Psh, off with it. So I don't know if this is the one. Yeah. See how I just 
the dye just cuts it off. It's, it's being abstract. Okay, back on task. Um, sweet sorbet dark. So with this one, I'm just, just thinking about the top part of each of the petals. Like see how I have a little area just for the top part? And I'm just trying to preserve that so I could put the, um, the lighter color marker up there. And when I do the inside of the card, I'll go just a little bit faster. So leave a little outside edge, a little border for the light color to go. Okay, one more, and then we'll do Sweet Sorbet Light. So if ever you're, you're stamping in Memento Black, which you use whenever you're going to be coloring something, um, and you don't get good coverage of the black, from a local craft store, I went, or you could use a Sharpie, I went and I got a, a black marker with a super fine tip. It's my new favorite thing. I'll show you how it works. As soon as I get this one done. Well, this one I stamped it pretty good. I don't see any any little freckled black area. See, that one just fills everything in. Doesn't it kind of look like it's glowing? I love these markers. Next on my list to get me closer to the points is markers. I'm going to buy a lot of markers. Okay. It's pretty, huh? Okay, there it is. So now, green, mossy meadow, just a hint of green. Then I'll use mossy meadow dark just to put some, like where the veins are. See, now I know how this is cut. It's like, well, what do I do with that? I'll just pretend like it's like a real long stem. I don't know. I'm guessing. Just a swoosh of color. Okay. Flowers done. Let's decorate the front. Then we'll work on the inside. Okay, here it is, and um, which one should I put on top? I think I like the bright one on top. This one has the darker, richer one on top, but you pretty much, this flower right here gets to be covered. It's kind of a shame, but that's just how it is. I do dimensionals. Oh, and Amy, these dimensionals are for you. Amy was so funny at class um, on Monday. She said, hey, when you put my order in, get me some of those, those magic dimensionals. You know, like the ones that you have where you don't have to deal with those little pieces. <laughs> and Ruby was sitting next to Amy. And she said, it's packing tape. And Amy's like, what? Just... Just, just get me some of those. It's like, no, it's packing tape. She goes, you just take a little bit of time, 
and put packing tape over the top of your um, your dimensionals and it holds all the little pieces she's like no nah. I said yeah I said Amy I even did a video on it she goes send me that video so I have a feeling I know what she's doing today she's putting packing tape on her dimensionals to make a magic dimensionals if, if you're interested if you want to see the video it's a noisy video because it's got the machine um, let me know. I'll send it to you. Or I can, I'll link it in the description. Oh, this is a brand new roll of linen thread. And I am stumped. Oh, I found it. Okay, little double bow. Today must be a lucky day. Finding the edge of that, that's lucky. I love linen thread. Should buy a whole bunch of that. I'll use that. Okay, linen thread double bow. Then a glue dot. I'm gonna kind of roll it up into a, a burrito because I don't want it that big. It's great that it's that big, but I need. I need it to hide under my knot, and my knot is tiny. Okay, there it is. Very, very sweet. And I always like to put just a little bit of glue on my knot. It'll dry clear, but I don't want it to. I don't want it to fall off. Okay, and then a few pearls, and then we could go to the inside. Pearls, pearls, pearls or rhinestones or any gem you have is delightful. I'll use a big one right in the middle. Then two little ones, one on either side. So I think in the last video I was talking about Tony and his garage cabinets. And, um... When he got them, I know we were remodeling the whole house, and he kind of did it on the, the let's save money side, and they weren't made super strong. Anyhow, long story short, a week ago I went out there, and because I heard pounding and stuff, and I'm like, what are you doing? He said, these darn cabinets. He said it with a little bit more vigor than darn cabinets. He said, these cabinets, they're just, I'll, I'll just pound it, I'll just fix it. He says, I've lived with them for 10 years. I could, I could keep doing it. I'm like, you know what? You could get new ones. It's okay. He goes, no, I'm frugal. They've been five for ten, fine for 10 years. I'm going to use them for 10 more years. Okay. You know, sometimes you have to choose your battles. And I, I wasn't going to go there. If he wants to be frugal... Okay, so I just said okay, and um, then later, like a few hours later, he goes, darn it, I don't like it when you're right. I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, they're all kind of falling apart. I think it's because they had like, um, like a melamine over um, like particle board and it was on both sides and it was craft craft made I mean that brand that we all know um, but they they weren't that good maybe it's just because he chose like a low lower quality I don't know anyhow so he got new ones so he has been out there taking everything apart he's like I'm gonna move the little pegboard over so it's right in the middle of the new cabinets we had to drop them down because instead of being 27 inches, they're 30 inches. Like, wow, okay. But he is having a wonderful time pulling everything down. And he has tables out there to put all the stuff on. He goes, the car has to be out of the garage for um, a few days because I'm, I'm redoing stuff. I'm like, oh, okay. Just, it's, it's fun to see him getting all excited about stuff. And, oh, I had to paint the wall. You know, it wasn't painted back behind there. Okay. 
but I think he's having fun with it. And they're here. He has the five boxes. Okay, so I did some masking. Oh, 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 oh. Also, my little pen. Pigma, P-I-G-M-A, Micron O2. Archival ink. I don't know if you could color with this. Well, I don't think it's um, alcohol marker friendly, but I'll find out. It's smearing a little bit, but look how fine it is. So with that said, because I know it smears a little bit, I am going to put a little bit of marker right on these areas that didn't stamp well. But knowing that it smears, I'll do it afterwards. Okay, so should we do this color or the red color? How about the red? Because we already used the lighter ones today. So start out with Berry Burst Dark. And that is going to go to all the places just coming out from the bud. And some of this, so if you're coloring this flower too, as you go along, you're like, oh, what happened to the other half of the leaf? Is it like just kind of pretend because it's so delicate? But then if you look at the how the dye cuts it out, and there's really no pictures in the catalog about how this is colored. Here, I'll hold it up here quick in just a second so you see what I'm talking about. And I understand, this is abstract, so. So, this line right here, is that like a petal, but it's so delicate you just don't see the other side of the petal? These two things here. So the way the dye cuts it out, um, it's just like a really thin petal. So I'm just going to color it like a thin petal. Okay, have that done. Ugh. And this is Dark Berry Burst. Next is Sweet Strawberry Dark. And again, I'm just leaving room for Sweet Sorbet Light right along there. Oh, I said I was going to do this one quicker. I'll do two more petals and then I'll put it on the table and do it quicker. Okay. Just leaving room for the next color. I had to go back and fill in those areas that didn't stamp that well. So school has started. Tony has a big full bus. I guess that means enrollment is increasing. Because on the bus, he has, I think, 95 seats. And he has 98 kids supposed to be on the bus. First, when he, when he saw that, he called, like, right away. Hey, what am I supposed to do with those three extra kids? Because everyone has assigned seating. Um, but, you know how it is. Like, airlines, they oversell, knowing that somebody just will have some emergency and they can't go. But it's even more so with kids, because they're always getting sick or they have a sibling that is driving and they'll drive them on Tuesday and Friday or, or who knows what day. But there's always a reason that the bus is maybe 60% full. And I guess they're counting on that. And then also as the week progresses, 
um, different plans are made and the parents notify the school. So today I think he just has one overage, but um, nobody seems to be worried about it. And so far, so good. That's a lot of kids. He went in early to um, change the seating chart. I'm like, I never had to do a seating chart when I was on the bus. Um, but he said when COVID hit, the kids had to do a seating chart so that, now what do I do with this leaf? So that um, if someone came down with an illness, they knew what um, parents for contact tracing. He says, but now that the kids have assigned seating, he goes, it's great because the, the instigators, they don't get to sit next to the good kids and um, but he says, I'm, I'm sticking with it. There's, I guess there's a few other bus drivers and they stick with it too. It just, it's a little bit more control. And I was like, nope, you sit there. I couldn't imagine doing that. He has a t-shirt. I think this is that funky leaf. And it says, don't make me use my bus driver voice. Oh, and he's got a bus driver voice. But it's kind of nice to be back in the, the rhythm of going back to school. Have to get up early. He's out of the house about 6.20. Ooh-wee, that's early. Okay, just a hint of dark. And it will dry lighter than what I just put down. I still, I'm not sure about that leaf. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing with that. Okay, and then the center in SU 400. In many of my cards lately, I like to leave them blank on the inside. So if I give it to someone, they could write whatever they want. Okay, one last touch. What do you think about the um, the kind of red, more red tone flower? I think they're a pretty combination, the two of them. So this little pen just colors in all those areas that I did not stamp well. Like up here, that's a little messy. And it might be because I had that mask on, I was doing two-step stamping. Or maybe it's just a stamp that's like that because it's abstract and I'm trying to make it <laughs> have good, good lines. Diane likes abstract. And I tell her every time I struggle with it. This one, not so much. But there's a few of them. Oh, it's hard. But you notice I keep trying. I keep trying to like it. I like it when it's done. Okay. It's time to put it together. Here it is. So, I like liquid glue for at least the first layer because it makes my card feel substantial. The next layer I'll do, I'm um, stamp and seal. Okay. Stamp and seal. Ooh, that's pretty. Uh oh, something going on here. See if that makes it work. Okay. That did. Don't have time for that. Who is it? Sweet Georgia Brown. She sang about there's a fire 
and I can't get bronchitis. She goes, I ain't got no time for that. If you go to class and you get me started on that, I could talk just like sweet Georgia Brown. I can do it. She says, I went inside to get me a cold pop and I smelled the fire. <gasps> I love that video. Okay, that's it. This paper, that is like the shining star. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day.